I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another review, and this is another Patreon request. This time for Felix. Thank you so much for that. First off, if anyone wants to have me do pretty much any type of video review, reaction requests of reaction to a list, reaction to a video, reaction to an article, review, whatever, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join me on my Patreon. I will get to it as soon as I can. And they could be re-reviews like this because I have reviewed the Candyman films in the past and then actually a few months ago I did a re-review of the first film and Felix asked for a re-review of Candyman 2 and 3 which again that's more than fine with me so again for anyone out there feel free. I know there's a Candyman remake supposed it was going to come out in October but now it's been delayed indefinitely and I know they said they're not going to release it VOD. Honestly I'm like, I don't give a shit because I don't think you need a remake of Candyman. But that's just me. But uh, Candyman, Farewell to the Flesh. Now, first off, I enjoy the first one. I, re If you want to know, my reviews of the first film are on the channel. I think the first film is intense. It's creepy. Has really suspenseful moments. Moments that made you feel ugh. the moment where the kid is telling the story about how someone found this kid on the bathroom floor and bleeding from his crotch and then you see the blood leading to the toilet moments like that are really effective and intense this movie doesn't have that now this is one of those movies that is just there kind of indifferent uh, the interesting thing is directed by Bill Condon this is a guy that would go on to direct Dream Girls, which I reviewed on here and quite enjoyed because I did that as part of my I think that was part of my Eddie Murphy marathon where I reviewed a lot of his films and Dream Girls, yeah, that was pretty good. He also did this uh, critically acclaimed film called Gods and Monsters, which I think was about the life of James Wales, the director of Frankenstein, had Brendan Fraser and I think Ian McKellen in it. I haven't seen that, but it's weird that Bill Condon, who would direct these critically acclaimed Oscar nominated films. One of his first films to direct was Candyman 2 Farewell to the Flesh. Came out in 1995, which uh, was around the O.J. Simpson trial. Now that I think about it. I just feel like Candyman is one of those films that did not need a sequel. And that kind of shows here because really this is just a retelling of the first one. And you think about it, it doesn't really follow the first one as in the fact that at the end of the first movie, what happened? Virginia Madsen became the new Candyman type. She was in the mirror, killed her cheating husband, boyfriend, how you want to put it. Husband or boyfriend, I forget. Killed his ass. 
they don't follow that at all. I just because, hey, they want Tony Todd back, which I understand because Tony Todd is a great actor and he does do a wonderful job here. And I will say the reason I didn't hate the film is nothing that made me that angry. The acting is all right. Carol, Kelly Rowan is the lead. She does fine. Veronica Cartwright plays the mom. She does fine. Uh, the guy who plays her boyfriend or her husband. I believe he was a guy who's the bad guy in Beverly Hills Cop 3. But I thought he was better here than in Beverly Hills Cop 3. The guy who plays her brother who's in jail for crimes he didn't commit. I remember him. He's a guy who played Tim Allen's brother in the TV show Home Improvement. He's been in other stuff too. There's this one guy, and I know I said this in my last review, but it was fucking still... Uh, pretty much what I said in my review is how I feel about the film we watching it. Nothing really has changed. The fucking cop, he's so goddamn over the top. He's chewing the cereal. What are you doing? You didn't do the... the, the. And Miles would be fucking Mr. Mumbles. Not because I couldn't understand what the fuck he was saying, but because I did not care to hear what he was saying. He was chewing up the scenery so goddamn much. So much of it was in his fucking mouth, I was ready for him to swallow. Maybe swallow, and then after you swallow, then you have a better performance. But he never did. Just acting over the top. They got irritating. Very, very irritating. And like I said, the, the story, it doesn't really follow the first one, like No Virginia Madsen. The difference is the first film took place in Chicago. This takes place in New Orleans around Mardi Gras. And this professor who was in the first movie, he's killed during this butch, butch signing. He's killed in the bathroom. The death's all right. Decently gory, decently violent. I'll give you that. Decent kills. Tony Todd gives another solid performance. On the flip side, it's kind of the same shit, different day type of syndrome. But when that professor is killed, the, our lead character's brother... He's in the vicinity. He's arrested for the crimes. Meanwhile, our lead lady, she's a school teacher. She finds out her brother's been accused of this murder. She investigates what's going on, what's happening, what really happened. And it's pretty much investigating the legend, which we already know. That's one of the issues. We already know the legend. This is not like, oh, what new information are we going to find out? What new info are we going to find out? They told you the whole backstory of Candyman in the first movie. Now, I'll give you this. At times, they show it. We they didn't show as much in the first movie, but they show the backstory that they'll show what happened. But it's like I'm already being told stuff that I already know. I'm already, they're retelling a legend we already fucking know. So where is the merit of the sequel? It's an okay sequel, but it's an unnecessary sequel. At times, it just feels like a remake of the first one, or like I said, a retelling. You come to find out the school teacher, the lead, is the descendant of the baby that Candyman and his lady had back in the day. Now, I find that weird because that means technically she's related to Candyman. But Candyman does all these moves as if she wants to fuck her. So I'm like, okay, I guess you're into incest? Incest man? I mean, you want some candy? Because the Candyman can. The incest? Yeah, the Candyman can. With the incest? Is that going to be part of the fucking song? The Candyman can. With some incest, candy man can up the incest. I mean, granted, I don't know why I should be, if the guy's willing to murder people, but yet, if, but it seemed as if they're working as if this guy was in this constant state of revenge, even though these people technically didn't do that, but it makes me go, are we supposed to feel sorry for Candyman as this tragic person that has now become this phantom that will murder and kill, but Paryu is supposed to be tragically sad for him because his death was unjust. It just makes you go, then where does the incest come in? 
the highway. Fuck do I know? I mean, that's what it appeared like it to me. You do get some weak boost ears. I remember I, back then, when I first reviewed this, I had watched the Blu-ray. I think even then, I had listened to the commentary from the director, and he said, yeah, these are some pretty lame boost ears. But he even admitted, like, something's going on, and all of a sudden, oh my god, someone in a Mardi Gras costume are up close to the camera, and ooh, we're supposed to be steered. So the lead teacher and her husband, they're investigating what happened. Also, her dad was killed long ago and what that all has to do with it. And why is her mom, Veronica Cartwright, an alcoholic? Oh, because of what happened. That's why she's an alcoholic. And then people she knows start getting killed. Her husband gets killed. The mom gets killed. Other people get killed. Uh, someone's kid is missing. What happened to that kid? At times she'll have visions. Well, to leading up to something about a mirror, and if you break the mirror, you break the curse, which, okay. And of course, they think she, the over the top cop, she, she's doing it. Even though shit happens that there's no way this strawny lady could do. One guy gets a tap by bees and thrown through a fucking wall, but somehow this cop thinks this 80 pound lady sit bees on this guy and threw the guy through a fucking wall. And he doesn't think something is up about this, something's weird and strange about this. Yeah, I know a lot of 80 pound ladies that could throw people into fucking walls and have a bunch of trained bees. What, is you don't shoot bees out of her wrist like Spider-Man with his webs? Can you imagine that? Someone just shoot bees out? That'd be crazy. Not the bees, not the bees, not the bees. One cheer moment I got is when that annoying fucking cop got killed. I'm like, yay, good. But then her brother gets, so almost everyone she knows gets killed. Her brother, her husband, I mean, fuck. Talk about bad luck. Guess I should have said spoilers, right? Well, and let me spoilers at the end. She finds a missing kid, breaks the mirror. The death scene is not that good for Tanny Man because he breaks in this crappy looking CGI glass. Like he turns to CGI glass and then breaks apart as if I don't know, just not the best effects. I don't know also when she finds the kid and who knows where the mirror is for some reason there's like skeletons on the ceiling I, I don't know why there are skeletons in the ceiling I don't know if the movie ever mentioned that then a flood happens so I guess instead of a bonfire here's a flood great it's more hopeful ending it's not as dark of an ending as the first film. So I at least appreciated that. I like the way the last shot occurs where, spoiler, by this point, the lead lady has had a daughter of her own. For some reason, this, I don't know, five-year-old knows the Candyman rhyme. I don't know how the fuck this little five, seven, eight-year-old knows the Candyman thing. What? She's going around school, I guess. So she's doing the thing in the mirror and the mom stops her last minute. So. Like I said, overall the movie, you did do a lot of worse with sequels. Acting's all right. Tony Todd is great. Kills are decent. Bad looking film and the way it's shot. Especially compared to Candyman Man 3 that looks like it was shot for table, the look wise. The Team Man 3 really did look like it was shot for table. Here, it does look like a film that would go into theaters, look cinematography wise. Interesting, it's in New Orleans with the Mardi Gras background, made it a little bit different from Chicago, different feel, different environment. But at the same time, with the story, the plot is almost the same. Lee Lady. 
Kenny Man's upsets with her. You know, a lot of the backstory, which we already learned in the first one. He wants her. She's accused of murdering people. Granted, it ends a lot more hopeful. I said this was an okay movie, but I do think it was an unnecessary sequel. Maybe I'm being very kind because I know there's Candyman 3, which is fucking... And it makes me go, really, Candyman only needed one movie. That's why I don't understand why you need a remake. Or whatever the fuck... I'm calling it a remake. Some say, well, no, it's really a sequel. I might... Then call it a sequel. Don't do like this bullshit. Halloween 2018. I remember one time, this is random, they wanted to do a Candyman versus Leprechaun movie. Can you believe that? A Candyman versus Leprechaun movie? Oh my god. People who know my channel know how much I fucking hate Leprechaun. I hate those movies with a fucking passion, the Leprechaun movies. W one of the worst fucking series franchises I've ever witnessed in my fucking life. Fuck Leprechaun, but yeah. That's all I had to say about Farewell to the Flesh. Okay, but unnecessary sequel. So, take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.